live from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the defending AFC Eastern champion Buffalo Bills against the Dallas Cowboys. Hello again, everyone. This is Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith looking for a good one tonight. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Datsun, who invite you to see all the exciting new 1982 Datsun cars and trucks at your Datsun dealer today. And by Seiko and your authority Seiko dealer. This plaque is a sign you can trust to get the best of Seiko. And by Lanier Business Products. When typing problems pile up, the solution is an easy one. The new Easy One Word Processor from Lanier. Giff, how important is this game? Look at the standings. First, the AFC East. Buffalo must win to hang close to Miami and ward off the onrushing Jets. And in the NFC East, Dallas comes off a big victory against Philadelphia last week, but now Philadelphia, in the wake of its route of St. Louis, has a half-game edge. Dallas wants to win to be back in a tie. That's the way it is. And, of course, Dallas has the great weapon. Number 33, Tony Dorsett, Don Meredith's favorite man. Yeah, it would have been awfully nice to have old Tony around in those early 60s. Wouldn't that have been fun? He's had a terrific year. You can see the stats there. Very close to his fifth straight 1,000-yard year. And on the other side, you got another one, Howard. This is a guy that's proved that Rookie of the Year a year ago, Joe Krebs, certainly deserved that particular honor. He's had a great year. And it was the GIF who said Krebs would never make it. GIF? Oh, <laughs> direct quote. Uh -huh. Joe Krebs coming off a fantastic game last week against Cleveland down on the field. Buffalo has won the toss. They'll receive, dropping deep, Byron Franklin, the young rookie. Back there with him, Rob Riddick, recently activated. He's number 40. Byron Franklin is number 85. Raphael Septien set to kick off for Dallas. We're underway. Important game for both ball clubs. Septien bangs it deep. This will be Byron Franklin, youngster from Auburn. He's hit at the 18, sprawls up to the 20-yard line, where we'll see the offensive unit moving on to the field, led by Joe Ferguson, now in his ninth year, having a good season. He has good outside help in Frank Lewis and Jerry Butler. A lot of similarities to these two ball clubs. You could say that Frank Lewis represents the moves underneath of Preston Pearson of the Dallas Cowboys, while Jerry Butler represents the speed of Tony Hill. In any event, two of the finest teams in the NFL today, meeting here in Irving, Texas. First offensive play for the Bills coming up. Joe Cribbs is the workhorse. He will carry the ball. The ball to the time for Buffalo. He has also turned into a very gifted receiver. Cribbs, right side. Conrad Dober out in front. Cribbs turns back and runs into the pursuit. Oh. You'll hear the roar of the partisan crowd as Cribbs is held to a yard gain. John Dutton and Bob Brunig defensively there for Dallas. All right, you look at the Dallas defensive line. That's the key to this game. Stripped of all frills, all analysis. If Buffalo can cope with the Dallas front four, they've got a shot at this game. If not, they're in deep trouble. You know about the defensive backs. There's weakness there with Dallas. Dallas leading the NFC in sacks. That's an unusual statistic for Dallas. Their mark of 28 on the season. It's second down and nine. Ferguson is back. Has the time. Has the receiver is Butler. He'll get a pick up the first down. Oh, gosh. Wide open. <laughs> Butler working down the sideline. Working right in front of Dennis Thurman, who has to respect the speed that we spoke of a moment ago. Jerry Butler can really turn it on. He's got a good low angle look. Butler, as you mentioned, Frank has got the speed here. Thurman, for some reason, really got turned around. That was not one of your real fancy moves. Butler just stopped, came back, and Dennis went to the inside. The Cowboy corners. Everson Walls at one corner. Number 24 has eight interceptions. Dennis Thurman has six. But they have been victimized time and time again by the deep pass. On first and ten. Ferguson. Short drop, quick pass. Cribs. Incomplete. Right in front. A strong safety. Charlie Waters. It'll be second down and ten. But that's the key to it. Against the Dallas flex defense, if you're going to cope with that front, don't run on first or necessarily second down. 
And Chuck Knox knows that. He's a brilliant coach. And Tom Landry knows that Chuck Knox knows that. But that's going to be, in the long run, the key to this football game. Stripped, as I said, of all frills, all over analysis. Key matchup, left side, 73, John Borchett at left guard against number 54, Randy White. Reggie McKenzie, of course, watching this game with a damaged knee for Buffalo. It's second down and 10. Chris, single setback. Again, lots of time. And complete. Frank Lewis down the sideline. Frank Lewis will have a Buffalo first down. He'll be down close to the 35-yard line, and the youngster that was victimized once again is Everson Walls, who leads the NFL in interceptions, but he does make the mistake. Why lead with interceptions as he tries for the interception instead of playing the man? You see him just a little bit late. I think Emerson is finding out that a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL can throw a lot harder balls than he was used to seeing down the ground. 30-yard pickup, Buffalo. Began at their 20-yard line. They're at the Cowboys, 35-yard line. Jerry Butler's foot left. Picked up. Single coverage by Dennis Thurman. Somebody messed up. Ferguson. Messed up in the backfield, and Ed Jones, who is having perhaps his best year of his spectacular career, was right there, and he ran Ferguson down from the left side. That might be a key, Frank. You talk about the front four. I don't necessarily agree with all that passing on first down against the flex and running, but that's not what I hear. The, the thing that they really try to do is get those front four guys to work. And Ed Jones is the guy that, according to the coaches and what I've really seen him play, he is, he is having the, the kind of game and the kind of year that they expect for him. Everybody double teams Randy White in the middle. They better look out for Ed Jones. Loss of three, second down, 13. Lewis Wright, top of your screen. Ferguson again with the tie. Fires incomplete over the middle. Intended there to Bramer the tight end. Incomplete. It'll be third down long. We'll see the defensive change on the part of the Cowboys. They take out all three of their linebackers. They bring in Anthony Dickerson, number 51. Tremendous defensive linebacker. They bring in Benny Barnes and Steve Wilson. And that is their defensive set. Well, you just looked at Chuck Knox gearing this Buffalo team around in what seemed record time until Bill Walsh did even better this year up to this point with San Francisco. How about those Niners? They're tough. Third down, 13. The third wide receiver for Buffalo is number 81, Ron Jesse, the single setback. Working out of the backfield, as we see now, the Bills in the shotgun will be Chris. Pressure. Flag is down. Pass intended for Frank Lewis. Michael Downs, one of the two rookies in that secondary for Dallas, was back there defending. But a flag is down far downfield where we usually will get the interference, and in this case, the holding call against Dallas. Steve and Wilson. Buffalo will have another first down. Steve Wilson is a kid that comes in in that nickel defense, number 45. He had a couple of brawny men. He was a kid that they kind of found out of nowhere. Holding. Number 31, defense. That's said. Automatic first down. Benny Barnes. <laughs> the first down is at the 33-yard line. I'll never do that again, I promise. <laughs> i tell you what, you can throw one on Wilson, too, though. i, I, I got to tell you, they could. 23 interceptions Dallas has accomplished thus far this season, and would you believe that they are dead last in the national conference against the pass? They have given up big plays. Curtis Brown, right side. Brown, the bull of a young man inside the 30, close to the 28-yard line. Everson Walls trips him up, but not until there's a pickup of four yards by Brown. It'll be second down and six. Not too bad for first down yardage. Brown, who hurt his knee in a game we had earlier up in Buffalo, and we thought he was really going to be hurt. He's been troubled with it, but he came back last week, and in a 22-13 win over Cleveland, he had his best day of the season. So. He is going to be much more help to Joe Cripps beginning tonight and for the rest of the season. Pollard second and six is Bramer, the tight end, adjusts. Brown, right side, finds an opening, stays on his feet. He's close to another Buffalo first down. And this is what Buffalo has lacked in the early going. Somebody to compliment Joe Cripps, who has been forced to do much of the work, while Curtis Brown, he slowly started to come around. Down Buffalo. 
inside the Dallas 23 yard line. No score, 12 minutes remaining in the first quarter as the Bills have rattled off over three minutes now on the clock after having taken the open to kick off at their 20 yard line. Butler goes left. Frank Lewis, top of your screen. play of Ferguson, don't you think, Don? You mean the call, Howard? Okay. No, not the call. Uh -huh. This kid himself. Oh. The way he's developed, the way he produces, and yet the way somehow he's never gotten major publicity. I think a lot of it has to do, you know, that, that Buffalo hasn't gotten really major publicity in the last few years until Chuck Knox came up there. But Joe's been having some pretty good years, but nothing to compare what he's had. Now he's got Knox up there. Ferguson now in his ninth year and certainly off his best start ever. Joe Cribbs, right side. Dutton misses and Cribbs hurdles into the air. Hit there by Mike Hagman and bounced off Hagman and still makes yardage. One of the finest, most instinctive football players I think I've ever seen come into this game. Not only is he a good runner, but he is an excellent pass receiver. Let's watch him again. He, he does some miraculous things. A little counter move, Frank. Start to the left, come back. They got Dutton, too. They got him to make that one step. Look at that ball come out, and it fell right just in the right place, didn't it? <laughs> Had a fumble, and that's when things are going your way. You like to see that early in the game, anytime. That's one of your miracles. Right. Third down and four. Well, you've got to be lucky to play this game also. The third wide receiver, Ron Jesse, joins Frank Lewis, 82, Jerry Butler, number 80. Out of the shotgun. Ah, oh, trying to change the play there. Look out, look out, look out. Here comes the blitz. Read by Ferguson. Butler's in the end zone. Touchdown. And a beautiful change up on the part of Ferguson. Reading the one-on-one -on -one coverage against Steve Wilson. Touchdown, Buffalo. That's what I meant about Ferguson. Good he move. can make it work. And this kid's got the speed, the moves. The thing that Dallas did, of course, you see in the middle, that's Tony uh, Dickerson. That's, uh, he put a full rush on him. And they did leave him man-to-man -man out there. The ball was really not that well thrown. It's the kind of pass that has the advantage because he can adjust before the defensive back does. Not particularly well played, however, by Wilson. Jerry Butler, that's his seventh touchdown of the season. Nick Pickemeyer on to the conversion for Buffalo. To the uprights. And the Buffalo Bills on the scoreboard. They need seven to nothing. And they riffled off four minutes and 15 seconds of the clock here in the first quarter. You're right on this, Don. It's very tough. you got to respect the speed of Butler. Wilson looks him right in the eye, has to turn around too late. If it had been a good pass, Frank, I think Wilson was in a pretty good position to knock it down. The ball was thrown a little bit to the outside, and we're going to be right back in just one moment. Buffalo, cool, calm, poised, collected. They're not overawed by America's team. As a matter of fact, as we look at James Jones, deep for the Dallas Cowboys, Conrad Dober says, America's team, my foot, our uniforms, red, white, and blue, they wear those funny gray suits. <laughs> Dobler, little respect for the Cowboys. Mickemeyer set to kick. Cowboys have not been successful, either running kickoffs back or on their punt returns. Jones from the two-yard line. the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line. Rod Crush there defensively and the Dallas offensive unit and I hope they've been stretching their legs as they come on being led by Danny White. Buffalo four minutes and a little over 15 seconds to run off a seven-point lead in the opening minutes here in Dallas. Danny White will have Tony Dorsett of course. Tony Dorsett to retake the lead from George Rogers of New Orleans tonight. Will need 69 yards to retake that lead. Earl Campbell, by the way, went over a thousand yards yesterday for Houston. Dorset. And he's upended after a yard pickup. Chris Keating defensively there, filling in. And tough, tough shoes they are for Shane Nelson. Chris Keating there defensively for Buffalo. Well, Frank just touched on the key to the Buffalo defense tonight. They're a swarming defense founded upon the famed Bermuda Triangle. Smurlis, 
has usually Shane Nelson, now probably out for the season. Chris Keating, a kid from Maine, on injured reserve with a bad back, passed through waivers, and the Bills have brought him back. Second down and nine. Stack backfield, intended for Drew Pearson, incomplete. It'll be third down long. And we'll see the offensive and defensive changes that are so characteristic now of pro football. Situation personnel, I guess you could call it. Third down long for Danny White. Wide receivers are Tony Hill, number 80, his second consecutive 100 yard game a week ago in a big win for Dallas over Philadelphia. Butch Johnson is in there, number 86. Drew Pearson, number 88, and a dangerous wide receiver who works also at tight end is Jay Saldy, number 87. From the shotgun. A lot of time, and he tries to time it out to Drew Pearson, and it'll be fourth down. And whereas Buffalo ran off over four minutes, Dallas has the football, their first possession, less than one minute. They didn't run it off, they riffled. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a very smooth little offensive uh, set of plays, I would say. Danny White jokingly is kidded about liking wanting to lead the league in passing and punting as we look at Roland Hooks 25, Byron Franklin number 85. Good kick by Danny White. Puts Roland Hooks back at the 20 yard line. And good coverage by the special unit. Hooks brings it out to the 26 yard line and Buffalo will have their second possession of the game. Talking proud, indeed they are. We've been to Buffalo twice this year. They love their football team, and it's really kind of added an inspiration to that community. We'll be back. Joe Ferguson negotiated the Bills 80 yards in their very first possession. They lead 7-0, 9-36, remaining in the first quarter from Texas Stadium in Irving. Ferguson coming off a 297-yard game against Cleveland. We saw him earlier in the year. Against Miami, a 338-yard night then. He likes pressure. Buffalo from their 27-yard line. Movement just takes all over. Buffalo goes ahead and runs off their play, but it did appear as if the offensive line dropped into their pass set before the ball was snapped. And even though the play won't count, it wasn't a surprise. They once again threw right at Emerson. Well start, number 72, offense. Call it on Ken Jones. It could have been the entire left side of the line. Well, you can see as you look at the officials, Gordon McCarter, Ron Bochman, Ball starts, France, and Jack Number 72, Fetty. offense, still first down. Interesting contrasting coaches, by the way. Landry now in his 22nd year. While Chuck Knox took over Buffalo in 78 after five Division winning years with the Los Angeles Rams. Knox inheriting a 3-11 team in three years. He won the division. Cripps. And Joe Cripps struggles forward to about the 24-yard line. It'll be second down at about 12 as Randy White was there defensively. And that, again, will be a matchup that will be a key win tonight for Buffalo. Young John Borchette replacing... Reggie McKenzie at left guard for Buffalo. His job tonight, one of the toughest in the business, Randy White. Yeah, but he'll get help from Will Grant. They'll be double teaming Randy, who may be the single finest defensive lineman in football. They'll be working on him double teaming all night. Second and long. Frank Lewis, top of your screen. Ferguson, Joe Cribs. Cribs. Gets yardage up close to the 35, short of the first down by a couple. He was working against Dennis Thurman, D.D. Lewis, number 50 out there, trying to help for Dallas. Chuck Knox's game plan openly clear. Take advantage of the weakness of that Dallas secondary. Throw under the defense when you can take advantage of that, and look for the long ball when you can take advantage of that. Curtis Brown comes out on a third down and two, and they bring in the third wide receiver, and they will go from the shotgun. Dallas didn't change their defensive alignment. Fritz inside handoff, right side. He's in trouble. 
Down goes Cribs. Fine defensive play by the rookie from Granderson Walls. Must have known what they were doing, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They do break it down. It's amazing. They have a third down situations. They know when to bring those guys in. And the defensive unit of the Dallas Cowboys is giving a rousing ovation as they leave. Greg Hader comes out for Buffalo. There he is, averaging a little over 41, 43 yards a punt, while James Jones will drop deep. And the point I made earlier about the kick return as we looked at Jones, the longest punt return the Cowboys have made this season, 14 yards. The league leaders are averaging better than that. The longest kickoff return they've had is 30 yards. The league leaders are averaging better than that on kickoff returns. It is a weakness for Dallas. Cater doesn't turn over, end over end. This is Jones. And Jones hammered at the 35-yard line. Dallas will have good field position following a 36-yard punt. Once again, a push. <laughs> Got to get early there for Buffalo. <laughs> Well, it's a little earlier here in Texas. The youngsters are out. We'll be back. 7.42 remaining in the first quarter from Irving, Texas. Buffalo leads Dallas. 7-0. Dallas with a first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Dallas needs a win tonight to stay tied with Philadelphia in the AFC Eastern Division. Buffalo needs a win to stay a half game behind Miami in the AFC Eastern Division. That on the line tonight. Dorsett. Dorsett is hammered right at the line of scrimmage. He may have squeezed a yard out, but that was about it. Second defensive rating right now in the AFC, Buffalo. They if were first overall stop, last year. I'm sorry, Giff. If you can stop TD, then you can beat the Dallas Cowboys. That's Cush on the Buffalo side. A growing defensive back, a good specialty team's player. A growing football player. They give Dorsett a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Springs. And Rod Springs just ducked his head down. He got lucky, found an opening, and he gets out over the 40, close to the 42 for a pickup of seven. Bill Simpson finally made the defensive effort for Buffalo. It'll be third down and three. I thought the tackle by Walls on that third down situation that forced the punt was a key early game play. Time. It certainly was. And they've not been able to stop them there. They've kept the drive alive. Of course, Dallas needs to get a little offense generated here. There. Third down three. This is the question mark yardage against Buffalo. They're very strong against the run. Movement. And we get a flag. That's their guy. That's kicked off. But it could be a Buffalo offside, and now we have another flag as Bill Simpson negotiates his way back to midfield. Flag down at the line of scrimmage and a flag down far downfield in the Buffalo secondary. I thought Buffalo was offside. We may have offsetting penalties. Again, our referee tonight, Gordon McCarter. Billy Joe Dupree listening in, and here's the call. Our defense, illegal block above the waist from behind of the receiving team. Hmm. Well, I believe that would constitute offsetting penalties if Dallas is presumed to be the no. receiving team. No, I think no. it's two penalties against Buffalo, so they'll That's take the first one, which is going to be your offside. Well, it just wasn't stated perhaps properly. That's nice, isn't it? Reggie McKenzie. Shut up, Reggie Rue. Awfully nice man. How about Reggie? Remarkable number of people down from Buffalo for this game, Don. Really is. I've been made aware that there's several groups of 50 and more that are down here. That's nice. They're getting behind those bells up there in Buffalo. Come from Williamsville, from Amherst, from Hamburg. They're from talking proud. They know they're standing up. First down and 10. Dallas, their own 47-yard line. Both penalties were against Buffalo. They have a legal push and offside, and here comes Dorsett. Dorsett again, shut down at the line of scrimmage, and maybe gets a couple. It'll be second down and eight. 
young man, if, if he can accumulate the few yards that he needs tonight to go over a thousand yards, will have done it for the 11th time in here, going back to high school days in Pennsylvania. Need 69 gift to pass George Rogers, who had that brilliant 161 yard day yesterday against the Rams. Put it in perspective, that's over eight and a half miles that Tony Dorsett has carried a football. Second and eight. Cosby complete inside the 35. First down, and the big man who made a key reception against Philadelphia of 17 yards and a TD a week ago has given Dallas a first down inside Buffalo's 35. Terrific job of the offensive line this time, keeping everybody spread to the outside. Look how wide that pocket is in the middle. You can kind of sense something's going to open up. Sure enough, it did. Right across the middle, there's Cosby. Third round draft pick in 79, and perhaps the best receiving tight end of the three that the Dallas Cowboys possess. Billy Joe Dupree, only nine receptions on the year. That's Cosby's tenth. Billy Joe, of course, the starter. Dorsett, little opening, but taken right at the 30-yard line after a pickup of three. Defensively, Isaiah Robertson. There's Isaiah, played several years with Chuck Knox, division winning years with the Los Angeles Rams. Rated a Buffalo, 1979. Really didn't fit into the conformity they expected out of Los Angeles. He's sort of a free spirit back there defensively. And consequently, he's got a lot of interceptions. We've got a second and eight, a 4 13, remaining in the first quarter. Buffalo on top, 7 0. Dorsett, little delay action. Fooled at no one, and Dorsett is held to about a half a yard. It'll be third down and seven. They're really closing in on it. They him. are. That hole closed up. They've only given up two touchdowns rushing all year, and that's a pretty good indication. Which tells you something. Yeah. In the meantime, the one time they used Ron Springs, he burst through for seven yards. Obviously, the hole. Hmm? Somebody's looking for, T for Tony, don't you if think? they not, we've got yeah. a scoop. <laughs> Somebody in the Bermuda Triangle is looking for T.D. Dorsey. Third down seven. Butch Johnson in number 86. He, of course, the third wide receiver and a gifted one for Dallas. White steps back into the pocket. Intercept. Flag is down. Simpson comes up with it in the end zone. Maybe we've got an interference call, though. Frank Flag's down. If the flag is down there, that's what it figures to be. Obviously, somebody was knocked off the pattern because Danny White just hung an eye. That's the call against Buffalo. Butch Johnson was the intended receiver. Butch had what I thought was a rather interesting quote in the paper the other Did day. Did you notice that? What? He could play for any other team. Start. That's what, yeah, that's what they were saying. Let's see what he says here. Illegal contact. Number 29, defense. Automatic first down. Mario Clark. <laughs> first and 10, Dallas, 25-yard line, Buffalo. His comment was this. Butch, you can play, you can start for a lot of clubs in the league. You know, does that bother? He said, yeah, I want to play, of course. He said, but says, I think I can handle not starting, and I'm not sure Tony Hill can. <laughs> Tony Dorsett. Flag is down as Dorsett gets inside the 20-yard line. Good effort cutting back against the grain. But again, that flag is down. Usually you get there the holding goes the ball, flags, and we've got a up. scuffle. Tell you, Chuck's got him fired up. I tell you, Rose made a good tackle a while ago. You may remember that other uh, two drives ago, two plays ago. He's the one that's kind of fired up right now. Charlie Rose. By the way, I think Butch Johnson is right. Well, I thought it was an interesting comment talking about Tony because Tony has started the last couple of weeks. Had a couple of holding defensive nose guard. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 29 defense. Mario Clark, unsportsmanlike conduct. The nose guard.
17-yard line. Chuck is arguing he wants the loss of down. No, he's arguing that it should have been brought back from the line of scrimmage. Oh. Well, player number 88 was unnecessary hey roughness. Right. He down counted. It will be there. second down. Oh, you're and right. 16 yards instead of 10. And Chuck Knox is exactly right. Dan Darrow. Yeah. <laughs> You act surprised. I'm, I'm surprised that you're surprised. Not at all. Oh, okay. I'm just Oscar. I am flabbergasted. Oh, well. <laughs> I've been staying up late lately, <laughs> reading my uh, rule books and things like that. I hope we don't have a pass interference. I'm getting better on that, too. I really am. I, I'm getting totally confused this year. Well, that's why I'm getting so much better about it, because they can say most anything now that it fits. 22-yard line. Here's the situation. 3-0-1 remaining in the first quarter. Buffalo on top, 7-0. The ball at the 22-yard line of Buffalo. Second down and goal to go. Dorsett adjusts back into the eye. That's where he likes to run from. And Dorsett kicking along until he finds the opening. First to it and gets back to the 12-yard line. Ben Williams there defensively. So it will be third down and goal. That's the way to open up some running room for Tony. Yeah, but Buffalo, let him open it up. You're sitting back there on a second down situation, and you've got 20-something yards to go to make a touchdown, and you can't make a first down. They're going to give him a lot of that running room on that second down and long. Now it's third down and truth still to that. Going. Well, of course there's truth to that. I'm not about I'm telling the truth, man. <laughs> Tell yeah, hot. Tell it like it is. Cool. You're hot tonight. No, no, not necessarily. Dallas in a passing situation, and the one improvement Buffalo has made defensively, that is rushing the quarterback. Thus far tonight, they've been unable to get to White. He goes on a quick count. Wide open is Doug Cosby, oh, yeah. and a beautiful Cosby. move by Cosby. He had to get into the end zone. It was third and goal, and Cosby did just that. And for the second consecutive week, Cosby with a key play. Uh, I love this. Watch this. This looks like a terrific reception. Pretty good defensive coverage. Wham. Here's where he proves himself. Breaks away from the tackle. What a player he's become. Yeah, Rufus Best was the defensive safety who hit him but didn't knock him off his feet. He's one of your great big old boys. Raphael Septien. With Charlie Waters holding. 2.05 in the first quarter. And looking to tie it up. He does. We've got a tied football game. Sloppy action. In the closing minutes of the first quarter, but the Cowboys get it into the end zone. From the other side, the field, reverse angle. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Danny White flipped it in. He actually was pretty open right there. You'll see Bass come in number 28. Didn't hey. quite knock him off his feet. Steve Freeman overran it a little bit. Stayed right there on his feet and scored. Play of Bess is 5'9. Cosby is 6'6, six, six, so maybe you can't fault him too much. We'll be back. The Dallas Cowboys move from their own 34-yard line. The series of penalties helping, then hurting, and then finally a fine catch by Doug Cosby to tie it up at seven apiece. Septian hits it. Byron Franklin is deep, and he'll take the ball at the three-yard line. And Franklin. Wow. It, and he may have turned it loose unless they ruled it dead. No, Dallas has recovered as Byron Franklin hit hard. Gave up the football. Now that's the rule that's the hardest one for me to figure out is that when the guy's got the ball and it's a fumble and when he doesn't. I mean, is it, I really don't understand it. I thought he was down that time. You mean, when is he down? Now yeah, Buffalo is, down? is indicating that they have possession. We got one indication that it was a Dallas football, and now there's a discussion. That's the very question being raised. You are hot tonight, Don. Yep. Buffalo oh, retains nice. possession. One ruling overruled by another official and frankly they better get control of this game frank as long as we've been on monday night football one of the interesting things we just mentioned how cosby has developed remember three years ago the hall of fame game we sat with gil brandt director of player personnel for the cowboys and he said watch this kid cosby from santa clara and we have watched him and he's become a star he is that 
doesn't like it. They saw the indication we saw. But nevertheless, Buffalo has possession at their own 24-yard line. Ferguson with a lot of time. Incomplete. The defensive play, 24, Everson Walls. He had to play through the man. It's an appearance. Jerry Butler, the intended receiver. That has to be timed out just perfect to make that play. And Walls was there early. There's our guy, Doug Toss. Pass number 24, defense, first down. Everson Walls, he leads the NFL in interceptions, but he has been beleaguered. He just got there too early. Yep. I don't know. No, oh, he hit him. That was there first. He'll give you something, and then he'll take it away. Give you something, take it away. He's been breaking and not bending, though. He's got to bend more and not break. Sage wisdom. Right. <laughs> From Mount Vernon. Well, you just got to play. You know, you're out there not trying to intercept that ball. You're supposed to knock a bunch of them down. First down, 34-yard line. In and out of the hands. Curtis Brown, that ball was smoking. He couldn't have handled it. He was only about 10 yards away, and Ferguson had a lot of zip on it. It'll be second down and 10. Third round draft pick back in 77. He's been a real steady performer. Curtis Brown, I already told you about the knee that's bothered him, but he apparently recovered completely against Cleveland, had a big day in a 22 13 win a week ago. Roosevelt Leaks hasn't been the guy that's moved in there in that fullback spot. They bring him in on short yardage. And he is effective on short yardage. Second down, 10. Ferguson lets it off. Flag is down, intended for Curtis Brown. Mike Hagman covering Brown, and it could have been a hit shot to Ferguson, and sure we'll get the call. Sure could have been. That's oh. what it probably no, was. Hold it, hold it. Well, I'll tell you, the way they protect the quarterback, they took a pretty good shot of the head, did Joe Ferguson. That was excellent coverage by Hegman, by the way. It really was. Here's the headshot you're talking about, Frank. Again, they've got, I think the biggest rule changes that have occurred in the last few years have been ones that have left up to call judgment calls. They changed the blocking rules on the offensive line. That's a judgment call. Is he holding? Is he not? I guarantee you, I can look at I, I think I can. Holding. Find, yeah. Number 69, offense. Repeat, second down. Gilbert. Go ahead, Don. I think you can see somebody holding on every play. I really, truly do. I agree with you. I don't, it, it's not a clearly defined penalty. Neither are these head slaps or how you protect the quarterback. What is the momentum when you hit a quarterback? It needs to be a little bit more clearly defined. I thought that should have been offsetting penalties. Second down and 20. Ferguson going for Butler, and Butler comes down with it. Yeah, that Butler boy running good. by Everson Walls, who was not in bad position. He wasn't in good position. No, he wasn't. What a Ron Fellows over pass. there in an inside-out position. Walls perhaps not getting the help he should have got. Let's look again. Keep in mind that is Jerry Butler, one of the real speedsters in the league. He's already got him on a step right there. Emerson is trying to catch up. He had pretty good position. He had good position. He just slipped. He stepped on Butler's heel, it looked like, and tripped. Hey, he must have reoccurring nightmares, Everson Walls, because he has been in the spotlight. He's been the hero. He's been the GOAT. Carmichael beat him for a big play a week ago in Philadelphia. Fellows weren't there. Would have been a touchdown. First down and 10 Buffalo. It's all tied at seven. Final minute of the first quarter. This is Joe Cribbs, and he's upended. Gets to the line of scrimmage, and he's roughhoused a little bit by Randy White. They'll mark it right at the line of scrimmage. He's telling White off, but that's not going to help. No, I think if I would do I would just negotiate right there <laughs> and say, I'll, you know, talk to my attorney. Check Quick. on his anniversary and send him a card. That's right. Quick glimpse of D.D. Lewis. Labeled today in the Dallas Morning News, the last of the old Dallas mistakes. EV's last year has been a great, great play. Second long. Dallas likes to blitz on this particular situation. Here they come. And quickly, Ferguson reads it, goes to Bramer's tight end, but there was a full blitz on Ferguson. Well, Charlie Waters coming in from the safety position. 
time has expired in the first quarter. And Joe Ferguson is mad at the tight end, Bramer, who probably did not read his automatic. He'll read it next time. We'll be back. Buffalo. Why are the teams then tied? Because time, time possessions relatively equal. Penalties have killed us, and they deserve them. Bills have a third and long yardage. Ball at the 38-yard line as we begin second quarter action. Three wide receivers are in. That means Ron Jesse joining Frank Lewis and Jerry Butler. Out of the shotgun. Ferguson. Butler's there, and Butler comes down with it. Good play by Butler. He was working against Dennis Thurman. He was getting help from Michael Downs. Butler read it perfectly. First down, Buffalo. I wish you could have heard Frank during the commercial break. He said, I wonder when they're going to go to work on Dennis Thurman. And Frank was exactly right in his anticipation. They've been chewing up walls, and the Dallas secondary weakness is being openly exposed tonight. Right there was Dennis Thurman. Big play. They mark it right on the 10-yard line. There is the speed, sir. He's frightening for a cornerback, particularly if you do not have help. He has blinding speed. Joe Cribbs, he's going to put the ball in the air, and the man is right there is Curtis Brown. Beautiful. Touchdown, Buffalo. That was a lovely play. They got Charlie Waters that time. Very aggressive defensive safety. Ladies move up, saw his mistake, couldn't recover quickly enough. I think this is evidence of how beautifully Chuck Knox prepares a team for a game. He does seem to have them pretty ready, doesn't he? I'll tell you a little bit about the versatility of one Joe Cripps. He can run, he can throw, he can catch. And this time he's going to throw. A throwback to another era. That's right. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> that was love. <laughs> Sickermeyer on for the conversion. Buffalo has retaken the lead. Matt Robinson will hold. So Buffalo has struck quickly here in the second quarter with less than a minute expired. Buffalo, they need a win tonight. Stay within a half game of Miami. We'll be back. Joe Cribbs to Curtis Brown. Last week against Cleveland, Cribbs caught three touchdown passes. And he turned into a passer on us tonight. Buffalo out in front, 14 to 7. Set to kick off Mickemeyer deep. James Jones, number 23. Stations in goal line. Mickemeyer wax it. And this will be Timmy Newsom. And the big win. Out over the 25 to the 28, where it'll be first down and 10 Dallas. A reminder, college football this Saturday, beginning at 12 o'clock Eastern time, Alabama against Penn State, as Bear Bryant tries to tie Amos Alonzo Stagg's all-time winning record of 314 victories. Iowa versus Wisconsin, that's an important Big Ten battle. In a 345, the second half of a doubleheader featuring an important Southwest Conference game, Arkansas against Texas A&M, and also you see an important Pac-10 game could have Rose Bowl implications. Washington State is right there as they go against California. Check the local listing for the game and the time in your area college football coming up Saturday. First down and 10. Danny Cosby, White. Cosby, Cosby. Cosby's wide open. Oh, yeah. Drops the football, picked up quickly. It's Charles Romes. He now it's batted away again. Oh, Ross yeah, I love it. Believe it. Uh, 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 Cosby was the first one to point back that we got it. Oh, that's funny. Cosby fumbled the ball. Charles Rome's picks it up, and Ron Springs winds up with it. What Got a it. break for Dallas, though. Opportunistic. They deserved it. But what a break, because Buffalo would have been beautifully positioned and could have opened up this ball game. What are the statistics you think of with the odds of that happening, man? <laughs> they beat some odds there. Freeman knocked it out of the hands of Cosby. And then it was Kurt Peterson, the right guard for Dallas, and knocked it out of the hands of Charlie Rome. And... Dallas has the football. First and 10, their own 43-yard line. Uh -huh. <laughs> if I was Buffalo, I'd start getting worried, I think. Hey, I this is to... fun. I hope you're enjoying it. Sally in motion. Oh, what a good block he made. Back to the inside, and Sally cracking back. Did make a terrific block inside. Three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and seven. That's Joe Cripps, who can do everything. 
But don't be happy, Joe. That break that just turned against you, that's going to live through this game. And Dorsett just went over 1,000 yards. The only player ever to do that in the National Football League. His first five seasons, over 1,000 yards. He had been the first one to do it in four seasons, and Earl Campbell yesterday with 97 yards joined Tony Dorsett with having done it his first four seasons. No flag. Dorsett skips along the line of scrimmage till he found that opening short of the first down, but just by a yard. He's beginning to get yardage now. What a remarkable guy. The way he's settled down, the way he's matured. Watch how quick he is right here. Merlis made a little false move. He was the guy that all, almost was off sides. Tony saw that one blocked up. He does have amazing quickness. He's got to have a lot of it going for him if he can do the record that Frank just mentioned. You saw Tom Rafferty, 64 with the block. Dallas has lost two centers, John Fitzgerald and Robert Shaw. Rafferty had been playing right guard. He is now the center, while Peterson is the right guard. Danny White looks over third down and one. The handoff is to Springs. Springs. Mile up, but it does look as though he has the first down. Yeah, he's got it. As long as we're applauding extra special efforts to Don Shula, who won his 200th victory yesterday to become the fourth coach in the history of this game to do so. Way Shula with his win over New England yesterday. Way to go, Don. He's a remarkable fellow, period. It was funny that PR guy before Dallas played him was saying, but we have 20 players here in Miami that have less than four years experience. And of course, Ermel Allen, who knows much, but he said, wait a minute, Dallas has Dallas 22 has players. Nine rookies. They have 22 nine. players with less than four years experience. They're younger. Uh-oh. Now, this has happened a lot this year. You get a little confused and have to waste the timeout. And Danny White calls timeout. The Cowboys no longer signal their plays in. They send them in with personnel. This time there was a mix-up. We have timeout, and we'll be right back. Dallas with the best record against AFC teams, which have, in previous years, really dominated over the NFC. However, this year, with Chicago's win yesterday over Kansas City, the NFC has been victorious 14 times, the AFC 13 times, in case you keep track of those things. Somebody does. I do. Well, we wouldn't have known if somebody did. Got parity now. Tell Baltimore for that. First down and 10, Dallas. 46-yard line of Buffalo. Play action by Danny White. Wide open is Billy Joe Dupree. And Billy Joe Dupree carries Mario Clark to the 21-yard line. It's just beautiful the way Dallas their tight ends. They've got three of them. That man, Cosby, Jay Saldi, and each one first rate. Beautifully executed play. Had a couple of guys wide open, but Billy Joe, of course, was really wide open down the middle. It's an old bootleg. That's been in the Dallas playbook since day one. And you do it on teams that really do pursue a lot. And that Bermuda Triangle, that three-man rush, they really do try to go that flow very quickly. Dallas that time rolled on the outside, had him wide open. 24-yard pickup. Dorsett is the single setback. Dorsett. He is That's taken Smurless. there by Smurless. Made a good move, didn't he, around that middle? Smurless is tough. Boston College. Can't be all bad. Second round pick a couple of years ago, and he replaced Mike Kadish. Took over that job as a rookie, and last year was a pro bowler. And rightfully so. He is so quick, and he carries about 270 pounds. They dropped Dorsett. Right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. In the second quarter, the Bills on top, 14 to 7. Dallas moving. Dorsett. And Dorsett again hammered, this time at the 20 yard line. Sherman White sliding out there from his defensive right end position, getting help from Charles Rose. That's that pursuit we were talking about while they read the bootleg was so open a while ago, but you saw that move as soon as Tony had the ball. They had really moved out the whole unit. Sherman White was the guy that really was there in the beginning and turned it back in. Met some of his friends coming in to help him. Well, howdy. From where? Trempaloo. Trempaloo? Trempaloo, Wisconsin. Third down and eight. We get Butch Johnson joining Drew Pearson and Tony Hill. Jay Saldi, 87 the wing back and out of the shotgun. White fires and is picked off by Simpson in the end zone. What up, D? That Simpson's picked off three tonight and only one's counted, right? 
step right in front of Drew Pearson. Well, this one counts, that's for sure. I don't know whether you'll be able to see where Simpson comes from, but he's playing the center field out there. Danny's not looking at him. He's looking at the man coming right there. I don't think he really saw Simpson. It would have been a well-thrown ball had Simpson not I'll been there. I'll tell you, Simpson is some story. When Cush and Nixon were hurt last year, they called Simpson back to He started four days later, and he hadn't played for a year. He had flunked a medical exam. And right now, he turns it over for... Frank Gifford with Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, watching a wild and woolly contest between the Buffalo Bills and the Dallas Cowboys. 9-14 remaining in the first half. The Bills on top, 14-7, and Frank Bill Simpson has turned it over with the interception. The Bills, first and 10 at their own 20. Curtis Brown carrying Big John Dutton out to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be second and five. And Howard just touched on something during the commercial. The Bills only carry three, two quarterbacks, and uh, the backup quarterback is who else? Bill Simpson. How about punters? He's the emergency punter. He's everything. He's everything. And he couldn't pass the physical. Remember how to sit out a year, Frank. That's right. Bills do not always beat the Cowboys. They've only met twice, and the Cowboys have won both of those encounters. Second and five. Curtis Brown. Brown got a fine block from Cribbs, and a flag goes down. Late flag, Bob Bruni, defensively there for Dallas on the tackle. Dallas offense looks pretty, yeah, pretty quick. They're moving out there. They had a lot of guys out in front that time. That was a pretty play. Holding Buffalo, that will negate a first down effort by Curtis Brown. Penalties, as we said, are just killing the Bills. Two highly explosive teams. So similar in character. They both shift their offenses around. They have speed on the outside. They have good movement by wide receivers. Holding number 86 offense. Repeat second down. The tight end, Mark Bramer, holding. Don't you get a sense in Chuck Knox's preparation?
mention that some will be saying BYU with the brilliant McMahon. Oh, he has hung Great up some numbers, hasn't he? Against unbeaten Hawaii. That's a game worthy of anybody's attention. I think it's appropriate to congratulate Marcus Allen of USC. He broke Tony Dorsett's single season NCAA rushing record. Marcus Allen with 1,968 yards on the season. He has two games remaining. Anybody from USC, Gifford will pop. Well, that one certainly deserves it. Yes. What can I say? Hey, there are a lot of people who can't walk that far. I'm one up. <laughs> Dorsett. 37 yards in the first half. He needs 32 to regain the rushing lead in the NFL from George Rogers. He also needs three yards to take over second place. That, of course, now by Earl Campbell. Jones is deep as Mickemeyer kicks off for Buffalo. James Jones from the eighth. And Jones hammered at the 25, gets to the 27, and we'll see the offensive unit for the Dallas Cowboys. I must say, Buffalo has a way of closing holes properly, don't they, Don? Moving rather rapidly, I'll guarantee you. Once again, take a look at Rod Cush. Well, he's, he's having a night on the special teams, isn't he? He really is. you got to have it. On Dallas' side, you got Benny Barnes, 31, and Anthony Dickerson, 51. This side, you got Cush. He just weaved his way through and made a nice time. You have no idea the amount of noise when you start breaking that wedge. I don't want to know. No, it's frightening. On first and ten, White. All the time in the world. Look out, Dorsett. Don't Don't you believe that? Lucius Sanford hitting just bounced off 73-yard touchdown. Well, that ought to do it. That'll get him stirred up. You know what? That a lot of time to throw in so many ways you can say this pass shouldn't even be completed that's pretty good coverage when you look at it had a little time Jim Hasley was 55 the guy there broke it and there he goes Tony D he is fluid isn't he he is tremendous but that when they when longest pass in Danny White's career let's watch the extra point the key Buffalo's failure to capitalize at the end of the first half. I said it would cost. Set the end for the conversion. And Tony Dorsett turned what should have been nothing into something very special. This game's all tied at 14. First play from scrimmage in the second half. Dorsett goes the distance. The explosion time here at Texas Stadium. The crowd really had just settled into the seats. Some of them had not even come back from the concession stands. And Tony Dorsett, 73 yards, touchdown. Set the end. Kicks it low. It's a scrimmer. Taken by Rob Riddick. And Riddick gets down the sidelines in good fashion, out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. So Buffalo will have their first possession. They were stunned. I'm sure, but this is a team of character and poise, not to mention talent. Well, now we'll test the character of this Buffalo team. I think more importantly, we'll see if the Cowboys learned anything at halftime about how to cover the pass. <laughs> I doubt that. Well, we'll find out. Partisan crowd exhorting their favorites. Cribs, right side. And Joe Cribbs steps out to the outside, cuts it back in, and gets seven yards before Mike Hegman takes him for Dallas. It'll be second down and three. No, nope. took 21 seconds. Tony's getting slow. He's slow enough. <laughs> sellout crowd, 39th consecutive sellout here at Texas Stadium. Cowboys have four, won 14 consecutive regular season games coming into the night. Curtis Brown. Look at Brown carrying Michael Downs close to midfield. First down, Buffalo. And Dallas flex, flexed the wrong way that time. Randy White was in the backfield, but he had committed to another side, and Curtis Brown slipped right by him. Look at Randy White, 54, went to the inside. Good block, good block. 72, Kent Jones. Hey, Market, close to the 49 yard line of Buffalo. First down, 10. Play action. 
interception by Ferguson. Pressure. This one will be picked off. Everson balls. His ninth interception of the season. He is amazing, isn't he? <laughs> He's a... <laughs> and there's a cowboy shaking up. Well, that was just plain a bad throw, Don, if you want to know the truth. Well, it was. I give the kid credit. It started back with a terrific rush. Uh, he had somebody really looking right in his face, and I'm not exactly sure it was. That's Charlie Waters now. Oh, no. Charlie Waters is a guy that's been hurt an awful lot in his career. One of the real veterans there. He, Safety for a long time. He is the solid man in that defensive secondary. Watch this play again. Yeah, but look, at Joe, look at big too tall Jones right in his face. The six foot nine guy. I don't think Joe ever saw him. Joe threw one pass right before halftime. I wish I know he wishes he had back and that'd be the second one right there. You saw Charlie Waters. He there was no strong contact. He banged his head in on a block and then fell off the Buffalo Bill. They do not appear to be working on his knee, which, of course, had surgery a couple of years ago. We'll get a report when we come back. Charlie Waters walked off the field, got a roaring ovation. Of course, he basically is the soul of that defensive secondary. Maybe he slowed somewhat with the injury we spoke of a moment ago. But he still is the thinking man. He was blocking for Everson Walls. Had nothing to do with his legs. Look and at now Joe Dallas Ferguson. has the ball. First down and 10 inside Buffalo's 45-yard line as Ferguson has been intercepted the last two times he's thrown the ball. And here's Dorsett. Dorsett is stoked. He goes, goes down to the 37-yard line. Give him seven. It'll be second down and three. Look at the way the whole swing of this game has changed. Since we had 33 seconds to go in the first half, Buffalo on the Dallas seven, ready to move in for a convincing score and a convincing spread. The mistaken throw by Ferguson when he lost his shoe in the face of Ed Jones's rush, the intercept, and ever since then, you give Dallas opportunity, you destroy yourself. Second down and three. There'll be a man wide open. Tony Hill. Okay, there it is. Oh. Oh. Danny White to Tony Dorsett. The old flea flicker. Dallas uses it all the time. Tony Hill with that great speed. Just blew by the defenders. So easy. His first reception of the night. In two minutes and 41 seconds, they have scored two touchdowns. They scored the first one in 21 seconds of the second half. The next one in the wake of an intercept caused by a rush by Ed Jones. This is the Dallas team if you give them a shot. Well, you could say they make their own shots. They Even do Ed to Jones a degree. But in your quarterback's face, you're going to throw it apparently. Buffalo sure helped. Except in. crowd loves it as how quickly the Cowboys have hung up their 14 points to take a 21-14 lead. This was almost a bad toss from Tony back to Danny White. You see, he went a little bit wide, Danny just shipped it over. Frank called it. Tony Hill was way behind all of them. I'll tell you, Danny almost bobbled it. He had the big eyes. He knew Tony Hill was five yards behind any defender. We'll be back. That tells it all. Tony Hill on a 37-yard pass from White on the old flea flicker. Dallas uses it frequently and effectively. Septian to kick off. Rob Riddy and Byron Franklin are deep. And we'll see Byron Franklin from the 10. Franklin out of the 25 to the 28-yard line. And now, we said it earlier, we said once again, Buffalo down by seven points. This is your test of character because the Cowboys, with all that speed, with all that maneuverability, the lightning on offense, they can blow your way unless you settle down and play your kind of game. Flea Flicker has been enjoying a rejuvenated popularity. What was the most memorable Flea Flicker you can ever remember, Frank? You've got me. Super Bowl, January 12, 1969. More in a moment.
Mine was 1954, Mount Vernon against Mount Pleasant. <laughs> it didn't work. Yes, it did. On first and ten. Ferguson. Randy White in his face, and he gets it to Cribs. Cribs has the first down out of the 41-yard line, and Ferguson, with the exception of a couple of passes that perhaps should not have been thrown, has been really playing well tonight because he has had Cowboys in his face all evening. That time, Randy White was staring eyeball for eyeball. You know the flea flicker I mean, Frank? A uh, Super Bowl. Jets leading the Colts. Earl Morrill quarterbacking the Colts. Jimmy Orr all alone, begging for the football. Earl Morrill not responding. Throwing the ball instead to number 22, Jim Hudson, New York Jets. End of Super Bowl. What game are you watching? I don't even remember that. <laughs> you should. First down, 10 Buffalo. Again, the pressure. This time it's picked off. D.D. Lewis bobbled it loose, and I think it will be Mike Hagman. Uh, again, pressure on Ferguson. And an offensive line that has protected him all season long is suddenly collapsing under the pressure of the Dallas defense. Uh, they love D.D. down here. They really do. Here's the guy that plays it for the fun. He really does like it. Some pressure from the John Dutton came in. Dutton was the one that tipped it, wasn't he? Looked like D.D. Lewis was in the right place at the right time. He says, wait a minute. Conrad Dobler, of course, going to come in, knock it away. D.D. Lewis, Dwight Douglas. Named after Dwight David and Douglas MacArthur, and he's a leader. He's the last of the Cowboys. He's the last one I was a teammate with. Dallas first down, 10. Buffalo's 48-yard line, Ron Springs. Left side, Smurless has him. Gain of one. Right here and now, Buffalo has to show that it can sustain, that it can hold, that it can contain. Otherwise, they face the danger of a rout. And we are only at the 11.30 mark of the third period. A total swing in momentum. Chuck Knox, he had so many memorable battles when he coached. Los Angeles Rams, 73 to 77. Second down and nine. Dorsett back into the eye. Tony Dorsett, first down, down to the 36-yard line. One of Tony Dorsett's favorite plays. He takes a little step. Springs, who became a fine blocker in training camp this year, leads the play. Dorsett reads the block, and then with that quickness, just explodes. That time, Pat Dobb and Herb Scott, they loved it. Basically, they like to run left a little bit more than they do right. But Pat Dobb is one good reason. Herb Scott's another. Both those guys have guard left tackle. Open some nice holes. Tony Dorsett now 15 yards away from regaining the NFL rushing lead. White, all the time in the world. Springs comes down with the football at the 31-yard line, hit there by Mario Clark. Mario played that very well. He conceded that yardage. Uh, uh, you see Springs dry, flipping off here, and I can really understand the reason why. This is the kind you don't really like to throw to those guys. He's up. Mario hits him around the knee high. Doesn't appear to be a bad injury, but he did limp off. And while Springs limps off, an ovation for another Dallas favorite, the longtime veteran, Robert Newhouse, one of Howard's finer players. <laughs> Wise guy. No, he's a good man. He is. Didn't he come to a dinner for you after you had pointed out that he perhaps was not Earl Campbell? <laughs> That's Newhouse struggling inside the 30. He sure did. He's an absolute gentleman. They made a big thing out of that down here. He sure did. We had to leave here with masks over our heads. That's Merced, Texas. Did that say Bob Goodrich on the bottom of that? Yes. How about that? Bob there Goodrich go. was a brilliant tight end at SMU. Yeah, but I wonder what that Merced, Texas has to do with it. That's what I don't know. He must know somebody in Merced. Third down and three. The ball of Buffalo's 29-yard line, and the Cowboys will come with the shotgun. Which Johnson is in, joining Drew Pearson and Tony Hill. Oh, no. And again. Oh, no. Danny did not like his alignment. 
did not like his personnel, so he uses a timeout. And Don, that's Bush. <laughs> no, it's not organized. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it Bush. We'll, we'll be, be right back at Texas Stadium. <laughs> anyway, forced to call a timeout. Has talked it over with the gentleman on the sidelines, Tom Landry, the only coach the Cowboys have ever had. I'm glad you said great that. Great mentor of my colleague Don Meredith, right. who guided him to a successful career in <laughs> singing. <laughs> right. And we got one coming for you tonight. Howard's going to help me sing Old Blue Dog. We got that coming for the game. Once so. I had no, no not now, blue. not now. We're going to get it later. Third down and three. 29-yard <laughs> line of the Buffalo Bills. 8:52 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys on top, 21-14. Danny White, again, all the time you needed it. Uh, the referee was in the way. Tony Dorsett got tangled up with one of the officials. That's right. Well, sorry about that, Tony. Might as well forget it. They're not going to change it. Well, you got a point. Everybody's got to be somewhere. Fourth down, Rafael Septien. What a year this man has had. He's 18 of 20. has missed from the 40 and 48 yards out. I'd like to point out that Ben Agagini and his personal coach is in a California hospital recovering from surgery. Wish him well along with his wife, Arlene. I did too. I'm glad you missed that, Frank. You think this Get is well, a big three points? Oh. 47 yards. On his way, in good style. Right through the uprights. 19 of 21, a remarkable record by Septien. The leading scorer in the NFL after nine games and coming into tonight's contest. His name was Bo Jangles. Famous name. On a cool night in Texas, if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you have to love it. 17 unanswered points by the Cowboys. 8.43 remaining here in the third quarter. Septien, high kick, hanging it up. Franklin awaits at the five. And tripped up at the 10. Great play by Ron Fellows. Ron Fellows, another one of those nine rookies that are scattered throughout the Dallas roster. As we look, Septien again has the lead on the NFL in scoring. 19 of 21 in the field goal department. This Dallas team is now at its hottest point this year. 17 unanswered points against a fine football team in six minutes and 17 seconds. You talk about opportunism, you're seeing it. I was just talking about opportunism. <laughs> Joe Cripps swarmed on smoking Dallas defense again. Ed Jones leading the charge, and he perhaps more than any other Cowboy was instrumental in turning this game towards Dallas, pressuring Ferguson right before the half, forcing the interception. This is and no then at the outset of the second half, forcing another interception. No time for Buffalo to get tenanted. They got to go back to what they can do. The pass. Take advantage of the weakness of the Dallas secondary. Second down and eight. Ferguson, pressure again. Here comes Harvey Martin, and he has to throw it away. Ferguson pounded at the six-yard line by Harvey Martin. That would be a pretty good Harvey on one side, two tall on another, and Dutton's just standing around in case they need him. Yep. Now you're seeing the Dallas front four, the vital segment, at their very best. Did you ever get that? I did it. Maybe when they go in at halftime, that they... They wear the same jerseys, but other people wear them out on the second half. It's not the same group. That's Harvey coming in from his side. They're all trying to be very careful not to hurt that quarterback, but he was right there, had a good shot at him. Harvey is kind of the man they look to to get things sparked up on that front four. He's a little active. We'll talk to you. Let's go get it going. Third down nine. Ferguson marking the signals. Pressure again. Under throws. Defensively, Benny Barnes was right in his line of sight to Joe Cripps. And R Randy White was there right in the middle of it, wasn't it? It's a rare day when you'll see a Chuck Knox team break down like this. Not so much the breaking down, I don't think, Howard. It's just the best defensive effort I've seen thus far on the part of Dallas. They've been improving gradually. They're forcing the errors. 
as Greg Cater has to come on to punt from deep in his own territory. With that kind of secondary they got, Frank, they really do have to get a lot of pressure on them, so they will throw some interceptions. Again, Cater does not turn it over. And this one will be collected by Buffalo and hustling down there, Phil Villapiano. That was another referee in the way, though. No, no. Well, look at that, it again. I'll guarantee you the referee was in the way of that uh, trying to catch the ball. All, all right. right. All right, look at the referee. See him right back over there? Good move by Buffalo. Bill Filippiano. Well, piano doesn't play all that much, but he adds a lot of enthusiasm to this team. Now, that's the break Buffalo needed. Let's see if they can capitalize on it to get back into this game. All right. First down 10, the ball at the 44-yard line of Buffalo. They trail 24-14, 7.34 remaining in the third quarter. Frank Lewis does not handle the ball. That will be ruled incomplete. And it'll be brought back. Let's look again. You won't see this often. Absolutely proper call. The ball beautifully thrown. And he may have been upset by the fact that his wife delivered a baby boy right before the game, Don. Well, he, he could have been, as a matter of fact, but I doubt that. That's Bill Filippiano. Way to go. What'd you say? What? Yeah, I can't hear you, Bill. What did, he, what, did, what did Phil say? Second down, 10. Crowd is booing. They thought that should have been a fumble recovery, which was not the case at all. Good this draw. time, it's complete to the tight end, Bramer. First down inside Dallas's 40-yard line. Now that fellows there defensively for Dallas. Two straight good pass calls, good passes thrown. A team seeking to collect itself. They got the break on the fumble punt. Well, we have seen much of everything tonight. A flea flicker for the score. Double fumbles. Two very well drilled football teams. A lot of youth on the part of Dallas. First and ten. Curtis Brown finds a little opening, makes the hole a little wider, and gets to the 35 for a gain of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. And keeping it in perspective, a win tonight for Dallas, and they will remain tied with Philadelphia at eight and two in the NFC Eastern Division. And for Buffalo. If they can pull off a victory tonight, they will remain a half game behind the Miami Dolphins in the AFC East. And the Jets are coming on in the AFC East. That's going to be a wild finish. Second and seven. Ferguson hangs it up and there's a scramble for it. And it's incomplete and a flag is down. They got the towel. ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That's the point. Well, that's one of them. Then the next point in, that was tipped three or four times back down there in the back. Almost was one of those unbelievable catches. Was that Bramer? No, it wasn't Bramer, was it? Yes, it was. Mike Bramer, Bramer the big tight end. The flag was an official's hat. <laughs> what you're not saying, of course, is the ball is tipped. Brunick, 53, is back in defense. Sees the ball tipped up, tries to come back. Look at Bramer. <laughs> Brunick says, would you get off of my shoulders? Wait a minute. He almost had that long enough, didn't he? He had it until Michael Downs collided with him from the rear. Third down and seven. Back to the shotgun. And the crowd does not like that. Which was, again, a good call. Going deep. Butler's there. And with him is Everson Walls. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. So Buffalo could not capitalize. We will not see Mickemeyer coming out. Even though the ball is at the 35-yard line, Mickemeyer not. He doesn't have that range. The noted distance kicker. So we'll see Greg Cater, who will try and stick it out of bounds somewhere inside the 10. Jones will drop deep for Dallas. And 
try to guess with Cater as to which side of the field he'll go. Great place for a fake punt, isn't it? Cater, straight up field, hangs it high. The Buffalo man is there. And right at the one yard line, and they keep it out of the end zone. The man down there first was no. Rufus Best. No, I believe they said he went back. And now Buffalo is screaming. They had a flip as though they were going to mark it in the one, and they say that the ball did get into the end zone. Well, that was close. Probably the yeah. Will it let them handle it there? I'm sure they know what they're doing. Don't you? No, I'm not. No. Oh. Well then, what happened is the guy that touched the ball, he had part of his own self in the end zone, you see. And that's the reason why the ball's out there. He was in the end zone. Say if you're hot tonight. I know. Rufus Bass was right under it. Just could not handle it. And Dallas. With a 24-14 lead as a first and ten at their own 20. Dorsett. And Dorsett steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line after a pickup of six. Ben Williams pursuing Dorsett. It'll be second down and four. Let's go back to that punt from the reverse angle. Dandy. Well, you see, there's the ball right there. Now, there's the man that's touching it. Now, he is in the end zone. Yes, he's he still, is. He's no still question. making that thing up. There you go. Very fine camera work, but we've come to expect that. That's one of those situations where that other side of the anger of the field does give you another look at it. That's fun. You can see it on the other side. Second down four. Dorsett now is 60 yards. He needs nine more to regain the rushing lead in the NFL from George Rogers. Ron Springs, left side, piled up short of the first down near the 29 yard line. Excitement at Dallas tonight. Explosive fireworks. Big scoring plays. Dallas on top, 24-14, 5-29 remaining in the third quarter, and Dallas is faced with the third and one. Good to see Ron Springs back in there. We may mention he went off earlier with, uh, well, that's a close shot. He's some eyeballs, isn't it? Look at that. Or a nose and some teeth. Yeah, and everything else. Ron Springs is back in there. His knee didn't hurt that badly. <laughs> third and one. Spring, right side. Easy first down out to the 32 yard line. Good calls. Ron Springs, he came up and turned into quite a surprise for Dallas. They drafted him three years ago and they got him at a very low pick because he had been hurt as a senior at Ohio State as we look at what Don is often characterized as the only unfinished stadium in the NFL. It truly is. There's Big hole in the roof. 425 left, third quarter. That's in person, and this is Tony Dorsett with Springs out in front. Great block by Springs. Tony chewing up the yardage may have now passed George Rogers. Tony Dorsett is once again the NFL rushing leader. It just moved beyond George That's Rogers it. by a single yard. That, of course, unofficial. If that weren't official, or if it is official, he is the rushing leader. First, second down in a yard at the 41 yard line for Dallas. Dorsett, solidly cracking back, and Dorsett gets the first down, skips out over the 45 to the 47. He was down. Gave up the football, but he was down. He certainly is the rushing leader. Again, earlier tonight, you were with us, Tony Dorsett, for the fifth time in his five-year career, went over the 1,000-yard mark. No one's ever done that. Earl Campbell, however, hovering the wings yesterday for the fourth time. His first four years, he went over a thousand yards. It's going to be interesting to watch the relative careers of 
Earl Campbell and Tony Dorsett. That went batted away and almost picked off by Lucius Sanford. That's the kind of thing Buffalo needs at this point to stay alive. They must have a turnover. The momentum of Dallas simply tremendous. Good defensive maneuver that time by Buffalo. They put enough folks in there that by the, knocked it off. By the way, we've been talking about great rushing backs. Franco Harris yesterday went over 10,000 yards. The NFL's third all-time rush, and it's only appropriate to pay tribute to that great player from Penn State, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the team of the decade of the 70s. On second and 10, White hanging it up. Tony Hill is down there, but again, White this time under pressure, had to release it before he wanted to. And White getting up slowly. And we're going to have a personal foul. It could be a late hit on White. It'll work against Buffalo. Big Ben Williams was the fellow that was I think in there, I don't know whether the penalty's on Ben or not, but he was one of the guys that was sure in line the pressure. In the midst of all of Buffalo's troubles, penalties have just destroyed them. Mm. You see the little blitz coming? Lucius Sanford, 57, coming in here. Big Ben, there's the lick. No, I, wow. No, it came from the other side also. Sherman White, I couldn't see who it was. In. It'll be first down at Buffalo's 37-yard line. 321 remaining in the third quarter. Got hit by a bunch of Buffaloes. Oh, herd of Buffaloes. You can't roller skate in a Buffalo herd, but you can be happy if you were mine, too. Dorsett, big opening. And Dorsett down at the 22-yard line. Finally taken by Bill Simpson. But what a hole on the Pro Bowl side of Dallas's offensive line. Pat Donovan, 67, Scott, 68, and now Rafferty at center. Peterson, look at that Peterson block right there, number 65. Came out on the outside. Here he comes. Good running. Bill Simpson tried to tackle him a little bit high and got a fist in the face. 91 yards. He will surely go over 100, barring injury. And suddenly, Dallas simply overpowering. Buffalo had held Dorsett to 37 yards in the first half. He's now at 91. From Timmy Newsom gets the call this time. He's a big one. Newsom carries Lucius Sanford with him. He's from Winston-Salem State. And if you think he's not going to be a great one, you're crazy. 235 pounds. Oh. Weighs closer to 245. Foot speed, everything. They thought he would really be vying for the starting position, but he suffered some rib injuries and also a pulled groin in training camp and never got back on track until Ron Springs had nailed that job down. And you see that out of the lineup is Doug Cosby holding his rib cage. Make a note about a man named Gil Brandt who assembles personnel like this. Seven yard pickup, Newsom. His second down of three. This is Dorsett. Dorsett. Turns right back into a, a defensive back, Steve Freeman. <laughs> Nevertheless, Dorsett up very close to a first down, perhaps a yard short. Bill Villapiano looking on, pleased with his own effort, perhaps, in the fumble recovery, but certainly his team has really been struggling here in the second half. Third down, long one for Dallas. And this could be close. He didn't get it. Well, maybe not, but it'll still be close. True. True. <laughs> Stepped in, moving out onto the field. Fans are saying, let's go for it. Tom had perhaps second thoughts, but then he sent Septian in. We'll see the field goal unit. He's doing the right thing. Why? Like the fans who didn't want the fight stop last Friday night. I've never known a fan who has accepted the responsibility for the death of a fighter. I mean, enough, enough. Yeah, you know? that's, that's too much. No, but that's a whole different thing. That doesn't have to do it. We're talking about making a first down. Yeah, but this is, you know, he's doing the right thing. 31-yard okay. 
third attempt. Low snap. Corrado gets it up. It's on its way. And Septian is now 20 of 22 on the season. Kind of year a kicker dreams about. And he's done it all with a muscle pull problem that has lingered since training camp. He's had nothing major in terms of distance along the 47 on the season, but 20 of 22 is not all that bad. Whistling Ray. Ah, uh, isn't that sweet? Grandmother took her to the ball game. Again, warm-ups for the Cowgirls tonight. Cool night in Dallas. 20 unanswered points in the third period. What a show. I think it's interesting to note, should Dallas go on and win, that will mean in consecutive weeks they defeated Los Angeles, Miami, and Philadelphia, and Buffalo. That's After a good being strength. really walloped by the 49ers, who there's no question about that team being for real, they've opened up a tremendous gap in the NFC West. They lost to the 49ers five weeks ago, 45 to 14. Septian, Byron Franklin from the one yard line. Flags are down as Franklin sprawls out over the 25 to the 27. He lost the ball, but I think he was ruled down the ball dead. Still another penalty. Legal use of hands again against Buffalo. They're not having a very good night with the flags. They sure are. It's been totally self-destructive. And Chuck Knox shows his feelings. Chuck Knox began, of course, his high school career, as so many coaches have. Here's our call. Illegal use of hands. Number 70 on the receiving team during the return. First down. Joe Devlin for Buffalo, charged with the foul. Look at that. You talk about Buffalo mistakes, not typical of a Chuck Knox team. Three intercepts, two punts. The intercepts were particularly not typical because Joe Ferguson, I believe, had only nine coming in tonight. He did, and he had also had never known the pressure this season that he's known tonight. Curtis Brown. Six five yards out to the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and five. We head into the final seconds of the third quarter. And Buffalo will not get a playoff before the third quarter expires. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. And there it is, the end of the third quarter. The score 27 14 Dallas over Buffalo. We'll return the fourth quarter action. But right now, this message from our local station. Back at Texas Stadium, Howard, where did Don go? Well, he's human. Oh, here he is. But here he is. <laughs> How's it going, group? The flexible it's going wizard great. from Mount Vernon. Well, Very <laughs> exciting football game. That's a right. remarkable demonstration in the third period by the Dallas Cowboys. The turning point of the game, seconds before the end of the first half. A great mistake by a fine quarterback named Ferguson, who threw it up for grabs when he shouldn't. 27-14 as we begin the fourth quarter. Second down and five. The ball just at the 20-yard line for Buffalo. Fired into a crowd and coming down with it. Oh, he did a good play. Lewis. Great effort by Frank Lewis, taking it literally away from Bob Bruning. He really did. Didn't Took he? it away from D Day. Great play. Frank Lewis. A little chuck there by Thurman. He has really been something, hasn't he? He's yeah. Been around for a while. Bob Bruning, number 53. Oh, no, you were right. He took it away from Bruning. There's D.D. D.D. was the guy that pulled him down. 38-yard line, first down Buffalo. Lewis once again, and a 34-year-old veteran to midfield and another Buffalo first down. Really good timing that time. They had a, another safety blitz. Charlie Waters came in from the safety position. Lewis comes in, a quick break in across the middle, right there on timing, right in front of a defensive blitz. That's who that was, as a matter of fact. And I can't believe you said he's a 34-year-old veteran. I was doing a show at Grambling College when Frank Lewis was there. And he may have been the greatest athlete Grambling ever turned out. At 
least Eddie Robinson has sometimes said that, the great coach at Grambling. First and ten, Buffalo. Ferguson fires and is complete. Frank Lewis once again. Well, this time he works against Dennis Thurman. Three in a row. What yeah, a player. Well, I, it's pretty good defensive move, I think, because what Dallas is saying, we're going to play man-to-man -man coverage, so the next best thing, we go ahead and blitz linebackers. They blitzed the last three times. Lewis is wide open over there. But again, it's really hard to cover one guy when you got a man for man. That was Thurman coming in with Frank. Dallas is also saying, we're going to let you have anything in front. Well, they better watch it. They'll get a little jig one way, and they'll go out and get them beat. Buffalo gets a touchdown. He got a 27-21 game and a whole quarter left. A lot of football left. On first and ten, handoff Curtis Brown. He's snowed under. Randy White is there with Harvey Martin. Maybe a yard. It'll be second and nine. Third quarter stats for you. Look how Buffalo turned it around. The great differential there in rushing yards. The edge and passing still with Buffalo, but total yardage to Dallas. And Time of possession, not really material in this game. If anything has killed Buffalo, it has been forcing, making critical mistakes, and especially penalties. Second down, we'll call it 10, as Cribs is in motion. Ball batted away by Too Tall, and you understand the nickname. He was... Had those arms outstretched. He is six feet nine, and this crowd loves it. The other factor, the return to dominance of the Dallas front four in the second half, when in the first half they appeared to be totally negated. As Don said, they seem to be wearing different uniforms. Yeah, somebody else put on those uniforms at halftime. You know, last week against Philadelphia, Ed Jones had nine tackles, two sacks, and as Tex Schramm would put it, he had a half a dozen scares. And he is playing great football again tonight. We're going to watch this from the end zone on a third down, long third down. Call it nine, if you will. Ball at the 37-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Out of the shotgun. Oh, I like that angle. That's fun. Ferguson going to Mark Bramer incomplete. He would have been far from the first down had he been able to come up with the ball. And again, that man in on pass defense, Anthony Dickerson, was there. And uh, now it'll be fourth down. Well, it's good. SMU turns them out. Meredith, Dickerson. Oh, yeah. Got a bunch of them around out there. And Goodrich. Out there. Dallas <laughs> deploying their special team, thinking, too, that it would not be such a bad time for Buffalo, perhaps, to take the chance, put the ball in the air. Cater's done it before. Rufus Best is down there. The fair catch called for and made by Dennis Thurman. And a good fair catch it was because Rufus Best was behind him between, between the Thurman and the goal line. So Dallas will have possession inside their own 10 when we come back. Well, I've never been to Ramsey. Oh, it's up Maybe close. that's one of the reasons. It's up there close to Saddle River. I mean, there a lot of folks from New Jersey love it. Got Dallas fever. But take two aspirin and go to bed. It'll be all right. Get over it. Whatever you say, old That's boy. right. That's right. 11.54 remaining in the game. The Cowboys on top. 27-14. They have possession at their own nine-yard line. First and ten. They've been dominating here in the second half. Saudi. Dorsett. And Dorsett. Straight. Quickness. Out to the 19-yard line. Close to a Cowboy first down. I might point out, by the way, that this year on Monday Night Football, we've been having closed caption for America's hearing impaired. Dallas-Fort Worth area has proclaimed, by the way, November to be telecaption month, and we're happy and delighted to bring this game to those of you with hearing impairments around the country. 25th 100-yard game for Tony Dorsey. And how often do they lose when he gains 100? The old cliche Once. now. Once. I know you go. It's like Dallas... Tom Landry is the only coach Dallas ever had, and Dallas never loses, but 
Tony Number Gates. 61 on the offense played an end position. He did not report before the play. You're there is your basic Mickey. delayed call. Cooper saying, wait a minute. You know, uh, Buffalo's never lost when Krebs has gained 100 yards either. He's not gaining 100 yards tonight. Well, they had the yard sticks out and were measuring that before that call. I guess one of the officials happened to note that the illegal number had lined up at the receiving position and Dallas will be penalized. But rather than a possible first down, they'll be back inside their five. I'll be golly. Where it was that Jim Cooper had lined up in the offensive receiving position. He can do that, of course, if he checks with the official beforehand. And you can see from that graphic we just showed that Dallas has choked off Joe Cribbs tonight. Nobody's perfect. In all probability, that wasn't Cooper's fault. It was the outside man who was off the line of scrimmage and should have been on the line of scrimmage. In any event, down remains the same. First down at 15, the ball at the four-yard line. Springs, Bangle, opening for Springs, and he's up close to another Dallas first down, right through the middle of the second-rated defense in the NFC. Smurlis over the middle. Rafferty did a number on him. Did a good night, got a good job on Haslett, too. That's good running, isn't it? That's keeping that thing going. There's our man of all seasons. Yes. And for many reasons. Colorful guy. I love his comment about Cowboys not being America's team. They wear those funny gray uniforms. Dorsett. Slides out of bounds with an assist from Charlie Rones. You watch this Cowboy team. You see personnel coming at you from all directions. They're brilliantly coached. They do have weaknesses. We pointed them out, the secondary especially. But, Lord, they have personnel. Howard, wouldn't you say a team with nine rookies on it would be considered a team in transition? You ordinarily would, but not the way the Cowboys are constructed. I think tonight they represent everything that the organization represents, from Tex Ram through Gil Grant through Tom Landry, right on down. Beautifully owner, put together. Owner Clint Murchison says, you guys do it. That's right. Stays out of the way. Andy Wyatt on second down and eight. <laughs> Billy Joe Dupree in a pass I do believe might have been intended for Tony Hill. They've had Timmy Newsom out there, too. He was one of those. They were all open. First down, Dallas. I'll tell you, there's another team, Frank, that's got to be closely watched. Through the years, they've accumulated maybe no more number one and two draft choices than any other team in football, and you can see it happening with the Cincinnati Bengals. Finally, they are there, too. They're really on top of it. They were sure ugly to that West Coast team out in San Diego yesterday. Cincinnati leading Pittsburgh and Houston with a 7-3 record. Pittsburgh and Houston with five and fives on first and ten. We watch Tony Dorsett stacked up out over the 35 after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down at eight. You know, and I guess Seattle's getting ready for us because I understand that yesterday they brought in a friend Herrera. He was the tailback on a fourth down. They faked to him on fourth down, got a pass, and then it was uh, their punter, Jeff West, who also ran. Or you know, he passed on a fourth down. They got a big win yesterday over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. So we'll see them play against the San way Diego. they did, Frank, a couple of years back when they looked like one of the coming teams in the league. Second down and eight. Dorsett single setback. Complete Preston Pearson. Out to midfield for Preston Pearson. Mario Clark with a good tackle, but... What did I say, Preston? I meant Drew, his first reception of the night. Mario Clark with an excellent tackle, but he conceded the yardage and the reception. Had him got a man for man over there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mario's doing a pretty good job. He's going to pick off a few if you don't watch him. Look at him. Had a good position. The ball was thrown to the outside. That's throwing him where they ain't. Mario might find himself looking at it out and up. 27 remaining in the game 
27-14 Dallas. Tony Dorsett. Oh, yeah. Catches Dorsett from behind at the 40-yard line. He's close to another first down. Hundred and eight yards for Tony Dorsett. 37 came in the first half. The remainder came here in the second half. He really hasn't broken one for long distance tonight. He's just those little quick moves and quick steps, and he, gosh, he is moving. Did you he? see what he did? Well, yeah, he just remarkable. They didn't even touch him. Hazlitt had him lined up. Not only did he not tackle him, he didn't touch him. <laughs> second down inches. Fun down in football. You can do anything you want from here. And I'll be darned. That is they, un, that's really embarrassing. They could do everything, but get it off before yeah. the 30-second clock expires. That's really embarrassing. You got second down in I, inches, and you let the clock run out on you again. I don't care who's sending in the play. I told you it's Bush. No, it's not Bush. It's just it's really. What is it? Dumb. <laughs> yeah, dumb is a good word for it. It's really dumb. Cowboys have changed their system. Still second down. As we hear the delay of game call, they started out sending in the plays by a signal, and they were getting assessed two or three times a game for delay a game. And now they send it in by personnel, and of course, what they've been doing for so many years. But still, tonight, I think we've seen three delay of game calls. I don't, a couple of timeouts. Keeps a stat on that. I bet they lead the league in that. Yeah, they're right up there. They're certainly a contender. Well, we got They're going to have to hurry and get this one off. Speaking Second down, five. They get this away with two seconds remaining. Danny White lost the football. Just slipped off his arm. <laughs> he was under pressure from Isaiah Robertson. Ain't it funny how time slips away? Yeah, but if Buffalo had recovered that, we <laughs> could have had a ball game. That's Mickey Gilly. <laughs> ABC's Urban Cowboy. I wonder who that is. Mm -hmm. Well, for about Why second not, and, si and uh, six inches is now third and 20. What happened to your old blue dog? It's coming in just in a little while. And you're going to help me with it, too. We've got a new songwriter, Mary Val, in East Texas. It's going to be really big. Go to old blue dog. So, as Don mentioned, from second and inches, we have a third down, 19. Cowboys in the shotgun. Tony Hill was racing down the sidelines, but he was not about to get behind Steve Freeman. It'll be fourth down. Danny White stays on, of course, to put the ball in the air, and Buffalo now running out of time with 7.50 remaining and down by 13 points. There's Byron Franklin, the youngster from Auburn, the second-round draft pick. Lots of speed, he just has not been able to find an area in which to utilize it. White hangs it high, the fair catch is forced on rolling hooks. He calls for it and makes it at the 19-yard line. 40-yard punt by Danny White. But more importantly, no run back. 7.42 remaining in the game, and we'll be back in Irving in just a moment. If you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, they have really turned it on here in the second half. 27-14, they lead Buffalo. Buffalo, with plenty of time, had not the game gone in terms of momentum the way it has here in the second half. Out of the shotgun on first and ten, Buffalo. Again, pressure. Big Ed Jones right in the face of Ferguson. He had to hurry the attempt. To Jerry Butler. Hey, when Ed Jones comes off the ground, leaps into the air at 6'9, he's like, must like feel like throwing it over a building. Really is. That really is a, a good point because you don't hit the quarterback, but what he's doing is, you know, he, if you can't see, you can't throw out there, and that really causes a lot of interception. As we Throws said at the up. beginning of the telecast, Dan yeah. DeRue, right. stripped of all frills, right. the key to beating Dallas is the ability to negate the front four. Few, if any, teams have that ability. Second down, 10. Back 
Harrison fires it to Ron Jesse, who does not hold on. It'll be third down and ten. And Dallas now is will get an end zone shot to show you what their pass defense looks like. They have dropped Benny Barnes about 30 yards deep, anticipating something deep. Perhaps we can see it on the next shot. We'll cover it from the end zone, according to words from our director, Chester Forty. Everything is pretty much zoned for them. Kind of interesting matchups you can watch from here is those short, the short guys that the linebacker positions trying to cover the guys coming out of the backfield. They're all lined up pretty close right now. Michael Downs and Charlie Waters are 17 and 20 yards deep, respectively. Here they come. Here they come. Frank Lewis. Flag is down, and Lewis has yardage for the first down. And we could have a holding call. Now tempers are beginning to flare between John Dutton and Conrad Dobler. Well, I tell you it's what. Dobler, frustration. Yeah, but they don't want to get Randy White involved with that either, because Randy says I, he didn't like those things. He likes those first round knockouts. Personal foul. Buffalo. Guess who it's going to be on. Let's guess. When have you seen a team so self-destructive with penalties? This one will be marked off. And Buffalo will be back at their 10-yard line. Here's the call of referee Gordon McCarter. Frank, last week we saw Bud Grant. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Leg ripping. Number 69, offense. That's Conrad Dobler. Frank, last week we saw Bud Grant institute the two-minute hurry-up offense with eight minutes to go. It was enormously affected, dumbfounded, a brilliant Denver defense. Why don't other teams do it? That's a good question. It was very effective. Ferguson gets out of the end zone. Goes up on top, Frank Lewis incomplete. He's covered by Everson Walls. Lutal Jones hit Joe Ferguson about as hard as you're going to get hit playing that position. And Conrad Dobler and the rest of the group still not through. Out comes Cater on fourth down, and once again, Dallas should have good field position. 7 16 remaining in the game. Heating up out there. Now, Conrad Dobler, they remember him from his St. Louis Cardinal days going up against the Cowboys many, many times. I kind of like him. He's sort of an offensive, offensive lineman. He's an offensive, offensive. <laughs> Beautiful punt by Cater. Not long on distance. There will be no return as James Jones forced the call for the fair catch. As Cater gets it out of the end zone. And Dallas will have a first down. There will be a Buffalo's 46-yard line. They lead 27-14, 7-08 remaining in the game. Conrad Dobler, he was mixing it up out on the field early with John Dutton. He's still snorting and snarling along the sidelines. And Dallas comes up first and 10 at Buffalo's 46-yard line. Springs right side and Ron Springs struggles for about four down to the 41 yard line. It'll be second down and six. Tonight on Nightline, Nightline is going to focus on a medical time bomb. You've heard so much about it over the years. We're going to take a look at it tonight on Nightline. The problem associated with exposure to asbestos. That's Nightline tonight on ABC News. Second down six. All night long, Buffalo has not been able to get to Danny White. Another consequential factor in this game. Good Good move. Skips to the outside, still dancing around, and finally worked his way out of bounds after a pickup of two, perhaps three yards. Slippery little fellow. When you can make a two yard run exciting, you've got something working for you. Would you call him furtive? Pardon me? Furtive. Quick. He sort of epitomizes what they used to say about Paul Horning. He can make a trip to the drugstore exciting. Here's a good move right here. Haslett right there. That was almost a clip. 
but Hazlitt made the move, come to the outside. It's tough to get him in the open field. Yeah, it's a professional crowd, and they are really charged up. Dow girls exhorting them on. They're leading cheers on the sidelines. Third down two. Flag is down. Dorsett. You know why? Stops with the whistle. You won't believe it. They ran out of time once again. That is just <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things you can do wrong on the football field that there's some excuses for. But I cannot find a single excuse for letting the clock run out on you four times in one night when you're sitting there. I do not understand it. Tom, I wish you enjoyed the game more. I think it's a fun game. You could really get a kick out of it if you ever got involved. Still third down. <laughs> third down now. It's seven. ridiculous. Personnel changes for Dallas. Well, I mean, I don't care what his personnel changes or what it is. I mean, you've got to fix that. I mean, you at least got to go ahead and play. Well, I just meant with the situation. Oh. Well, then, okay. Shotgun. And no, Butch Johnson cannot come down inbounds. He came very close. He's done it so many times. This time, unsuccessful in Dallas. Is forced to punt. Ball was thrown out, but he made a good catch. 6-16 remaining in the game. You realize that the last two drives have been stopped by delay of the game? I penalty? do realize that, yes. I didn't, in case you didn't, I was going to mention it. I said it was Bush. You said it was dumb. That's Either right. way, It's getting closer right. to Bush. <laughs> it really is when you do it four times, my friend. Hooks 25, Byron Franklin 85. They're deep for Buffalo. Here's Daddy White's putt. Looking for the corner. He'll get the end zone. And Buffalo will have a first and 10 at the 20. And it almost seems as though they have been at their own 20 yard line throughout the second half. We'll be back in Irving, Texas right after this. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell, are singing minstrel from Mount Vernon, Texas, nearby to the great metropolis of Dallas, Don Meredith. Thank you. Watching a lot of interesting happenings tonight. Primarily the momentum shift at halftime. The Dallas Cowboys coming out and totally dominating here in the second half. Buffalo, first and ten from their own 20-yard line. Jerry Butler. And he's taken by Charlie White, who has shaken up once again. Charlie Waters is... Charlie it. Waters, rather. He... Oh, me. He's had so many problems with his... Basically, with his knees. He's had shoulder problems. He's in pain we now. Saw, yeah, we saw him go out early, earlier in the game when he was... Had an eye and a finger. Grab that right arm as though it could have something to do with his right shoulder. Yeah. He was shaken up earlier, if you're with us. Very similar situation. Contact not that severe. There's a little action going on there. Butler is a heck of a receiver. Charlie Waters coming in. Always does a good job. Let's see if you can see. Fell right on his left shoulder. And that's the one that's dragging. Uh. There is Charlie. I tell you, Charlie is the guy that really, he's the defensive signal caller back there. You've seen him all night. You've seen him all season. He waves his arms, waves his hands. He's got two rookies playing with him. They really depend so much on him. Uh, really, in so many areas, he plays well, but he also has got to call those signals back in there. Who's the newest member of the Ring of Honor there? Mel Renfro, recently honored, and as we can see, there are only five Cowboys thus far have been enshrined, I guess is one way of saying it, in the Ring of Honor here at Texas Stadium. Enringed. I guess you could say enringed. We've been enringed. Great thrills by many of those players over the years as this team has developed into one of the Perennial winners and Charlie Waters up one would presume it had something to do perhaps with a pinch nerve. Like hitting a funny bone, maybe. Charlie Waters appears to be all right. Butler picked up five yards. It is now second and five for Buffalo at their own 25 yard line. Time definitely a factor. 5.54 remaining and the clock has started. Three interceptions. He only had nine in the previous nine games of the season. Get Joe Ferguson. Oh, 
Ferguson, and almost picked off by Ron Fellows, another one of those rookies back there. A seventh round draft pick out of Missouri. Make us new with this telecast. It's presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. They bring broadcasts throughout the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. All right. Oh, does that look? Oh. Somebody please tell me that's not you. That no, no jalapeno peppers, though. Uh -huh. One for you. One for you. <laughs> they got a lot of good Mexican food down here. Third down and five. 40 tried it. He's got to like it. He's not well. Flag is down. As Chris bobbles the ball. All kinds of flags. They're still getting out there with Nobler and Dutton. And Dutton is really getting hot. <laughs> There is some kind of war, and even Joe Ferguson is amused by it, going on between John Dutton and Conrad Dobler. Dobler, 69. Well, he doesn't really have a good shot. That's what he got, That's what he got before. That's called leg whipping. That's called, you're not supposed to do that. Fourth down, Greg Cater is on. Jones is deep. Greg Cater has been very active here in the second half. This time, he gets it to turn over, and it takes James Jones back to his 33-yard line, where he's captured instantly up around the 39-yard line. 42-yard punt. Nice kick by Greg Cater. So Dallas, 5.20 on the clock, leading 27-14 in very good shape, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. WFAA Television, Channel 8, Dallas-Fort Worth. Interesting football game. Seesaw battle, Buffalo having the lead in the first half. Dallas exploded for 17 quick points in the third quarter have extended their lead to 27-14, dominating totally here in the second half. Ron Springs, big opening as Springs bangs through after the 47-yard line. Gain of eight, it'll be second down and two as Jim Hazlitt made the stop for Buffalo. Very simply, it's a tired Buffalo team. They have been outmanned. The Dallas front four took over in the second half. Quickly seizing on every opportunity they cleaned up on the Buffalo Bills. It's that simple. We're done. Charlie Waters. Pinch nerve. We should see him again. Second down and two. Dorsett. Is he clever? Got him the first down. First down. Inside Buffalo territory, close to the 49-yard line. Four and a half minutes left, counting down. It's run out time now. Got a cowboy that's down. Referee calls the injury timeout. Appears to be Herb Scott, I think. So I said now 114 yards as we see Herb Scott, the all pro left guard for the Cowboys being attended. Scott appears to be all right, leaving the field. He'll get an ovation. Then Titanser will replace Scott, rookie from Brigham Young, third round draft pick. And tonight is starting to look like 15 consecutive games. Last time the Cowboys lost here was in postseason play. They lost to the Los Angeles Rams in December of 79. Billy Waddy. Off that pass, Vince Farragamo. You know, since they opened this stadium in 71, Dallas is 69 wins to 15 losses. Not a very friendly atmosphere. On first and 10. Look at that. 
And every time you watch this young man in his third year from Ohio State, he improves. Well, that was terrific acceleration right through the mind. Look at this one. Kurt Peterson, 65. Moved him out to the outside. Cooper on the outside. Cooper is a heck of a good tackle. Big hole. And he really didn't know how to hit it. Fifth round draft pick. Again, you get back to fundamentals. How do you build a football team? Get you get the right director of player personnel who knows how to draft. In this Dorset, case, Gil Brandt. Dorset 114 yards rushing Springs. Now 61. First and 10 Dallas. Springs. Good move. Oh, what a nice move. To get four yards when he should have had two to the 31. It'll be second down and six. Coming inside of three minutes now. Hey, about Ron Springs, he was a junior college player of the year a few years ago at a place, well, Coffeeville, Kansas, to be exact. He had 1,800 yards rushing that year and 25 TDs. He was also Ohio State's leading rusher and receiver as a junior. Hurt as a senior, and as Howard pointed out, the Cowboys knew he had it. They picked him up in the fifth round. Second and six. Dorset. And Dorset held short of the first down at the 28-yard line. Charlie Rome's playing it well there from the corner for Buffalo. Playing against a fine football team, finely coached. The Dallas Cowboys tonight, I think, have put on their best exhibition of the season. They came through when they had to in every quarter. The front four. The quarterback. The remaining and weakness, the defensive secondary. The Dallas. running back, sensation. Dallas lets a run down to the two-minute warning. And that is what remains in the game for Dallas to draw into a tie with Philadelphia in the NFC Eastern Division. It'll be third and two when we come. Back at Texas Stadium in Irving, crowd is starting to pull away they have seen enough if you will and most of it has been awesome here in the second half for the Dallas Cowboys the Cowboys now leading 27 to 14 they have a third down long two the ball is at Buffalo's 28 yard line a lot of movement in that backfield they're about to run out of time once again this time they get it off Ron Springs and he is short of the first down. Well, I don't know what that was all about in the backfield, but clearly. <laughs> Trying to make an audible there, I think. Looks like it's going to be a fourth down shot. And Tom Landry has Raphael Septian right next to him, but he does not send him in. So uh, Dallas is a fourth and one. I think they'll just let the seconds tick off. 1.30 and the clock is moving. Seconds continuing to tick away, and now it's stopped with 124 remaining in the game. Very difficult game for Coach Chuck Knox. His team in the end undermanned against a team with superior personnel. Yet he brought his team up for this game, and they had a brilliant first half until just seconds before the end, 33 to be exact. A terrible mistake by Joe Ferguson caused an intercept when Buffalo was on the Dallas 7. They might have, at the very least, had a field goal that would have given them the going into the locker room momentum, but it did not happen that way. The clock is understand. continuing to run down. We have no indication of a timeout on the field by either team. Buffalo is complaining. I don't blame about them, the man. Clock. That's the biggest screw-up I've seen in a while. Danny White did not call timeout. He just walked over to the sidelines, and we're going to have to probably do something yeah, we with the clock. Something. We've seen a lot of this tonight. Yeah. Maybe they'll correct the clock. Hopefully. Oh. The scoreboard clock indicates that Dallas has been charged with a timeout. We saw no official indication. And Danny White is standing there saying, you guys figure it out. That's, not, that's five zebras, but let's think about an old blue dog. You want to? Go ahead. Once, Once I have. 
Captain Old Blue, Blue Dog, Dog made them possums walk that log. log. Run them possums up a tree. Here he comes. Will the cotton keeper put 25 seconds back on the clock? Yes, oh, I will. 25 seconds. Now you were saying. Oh, I tell you, that guy really knows how to break up a good routine, doesn't he? Probably was just best. I'll tell you one thing, Nashville is safe. I guess you're right. <laughs> Well, they put the seconds back on the scoreboard clock amidst a lot of confusion. We'd like to tell you this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less, and by Datsun, who invites you to see all the exciting new 1982 Datsun cars and trucks at your Datsun dealer today. Nashville may be safe gift, but not Willie Nelson. That's true. Well, they put the 25 seconds back on the clock. Now they're ticking off once again. We're down to one minute remaining. It's fourth down and two. The field goal unit stays on the bench for the Dallas Cowboys. And Dallas is now approaching another delay a game penalty. They might set the record. Nope, they get the playoff. Springs piled up right side. He'll be short of the first down, and a flag is down. Well, a game that's been very interesting to watch in many respects, exciting at other times, has deteriorated somewhat here in the final few minutes. Well, they didn't make that first down, and a flag was down. There is no foul. The block was legal by 87. No foul. We are picking up the flag. Well, a little more confusion. We didn't question the block of Jay Sally. But they work it out, and Buffalo has the football. They'll have a first down at their own 28-yard line. Buffalo next week will be at St. Louis. They, that is followed by games with New England, Washington, San Diego, New England again, and would you believe, Buffalo closes out the year with Miami. Be a good one, won't it? Mm -hmm. Next week, Dallas will be at Detroit. Then they play Washington, Chicago, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and then the Giants. Picked off, Everson Walls, his tenth interception of the year. He just happens to be where he should be, that or where he should not be. That's got to be close to your record for your rookie. That's his 10th interception of the year. And his 10th game of the year, he had three in preseason. Well, the ball was underthrown, and he was just in the right position. He's That's remarkable. They got him as a free agent. He led the nation last year at Grambling. You know what Ernie Stottner told Gil Brand? Did you? you what? You and your computer drafting. Uh -huh. Says you just bring in the free agents. We'll train them, we'll make them. Uh -huh. We don't need. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tied Mel Renfro's record of 10 interceptions, by the way. And he's got a few games remaining. He surely mm -hmm. does. He surely does. You know, our buddy Steve Pazika's mom is in the hospital in Canton. She's 84 years old. We're going to wish her a speedy recovery. Her name's Dina. Amen. First down of 10, Danny White flops on the football. Cowboys with a deep man as a safety protection, I guess you could call the man that they drop deep. Buffalo exercises a timeout. They have two remaining. And will give us an opportunity to thank Steve Fizik and, of course, our statistician, Jerry Klein, and tell you the executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football produced, of course, by Bob Goodrich and directed by Chet Forty. Our technical director, Joe Chavo. Associate director is Bob Rosberg. Yes, the son of the former PGA champion. Good man, too. Technical manager, Coach Coltrane. Our unit manager, Bob Cervelli. Assistant to the producer is Robbie Cowan. Great bunch of guys to travel around the country with, and we're going to be traveling out to Seattle to watch the Chargers, who are having their problems in that Western Division of the AFC. Denver now back out on top with a win yesterday. That was a great game. That win over Cleveland. Great game. Overtime. Denver with a 7-3 mark in the Western Division of the AFC. San Diego hovering close at 6-4, and we'll see them against Seattle. Seattle winner yesterday over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down and 12. And I guess we'll watch this happen a couple more times. Yep. 
There's a good shot of the winning coach. Tom Landon. that one. There's Gil Brand, whom you just saw. There's Tom with the new green hat. winning seasons, 14 years in the playoffs, five Super Bowls. That's a record. He won two of them. Now the updated standings. The NFC East. Dallas will be tied with the Eagles. The Giants dropping fast and Washington coming fast. And then the AFC East. The Jets closing in on Buffalo and Miami getting for the moment some breathing space. This is going to be an exciting play. I want you to watch this one, Howard. <laughs> Maybe we can get a replay. This time, Buffalo expires their final timeout. Use it to reverse angle. In fact, they're not even going to use it. I do not believe they're leaving the field. And you saw the standings. Big second half by the Dallas Cowboys. Turned it around. Great defensive effort. Joe Ferguson, the Buffalo Bills, have their work cut out for them in the AFC Eastern Division. Once again, the final score, 27-14, Dallas over Buffalo. And remember, stay tuned for ABC News Nightline, 30 minutes after the game, 11.30 on the West Coast, over most of these ABC stations. Travel arrangements made through, and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We'll see you next Monday night from Seattle.